If you could be a part of saving or enhancing 500,000 lives a year, would you do it? We want you to know about a national effort that impacts the lives of thousands, maybe even someone you know. Every year, nearly 30,000 life-saving organ transplants are performed across the country. Organ donors are the heroes that make this possible. Hear the stories of recipients, donors, and medical professionals who tell of the miracle of organ donation. We want you to be ready to decide for yourself. Transplant survivor. Yeah, 10 years ago I had a kidney transplant. Did you heart transplant. My name's Chris Klug. I'm a bronze medalist snowboarder and a liver transplant recipient. You no, know, I sat down with my family. We sat down and talked about it, and, and by being around Chris, he enlightened me on how important it is and how hard it is for people who need the organs. I mean, that there's not really enough to go around. Everybody agrees that, that donating their organs is a good idea, but a lot of people don't ever take that step to sign up. This is all about raising that awareness and getting people uh, to check that box on their driver's license. Hi, I'm Chris Klug, liver transplant recipient and bronze medalist snowboarder. Almost 10 years ago, I received a life-saving liver transplant. I'm here today because of the heroic and selfless decision of another family. I want to share with you today the facts about organ and tissue donation so that you have the tools to make an educated and informed decision and so that you also know the steps to take to designate that decision. I've been snowboarding for almost 25 years. In 1998, I had a chance to represent our country in snowboarding's first Winter Olympic game in Nagano, Japan, where I finished in sixth place. Very few people knew that in 1998, I was actually on a transplant waiting list. I was diagnosed in the early 90s through a routine physical with a very rare and life-threatening liver disease called PSC, the same disease that led to the death of one of my true heroes and football greats, Walter Payton. After six years on a transplant waiting list and three months at a critical stage, my wait was over. After a six hour liver transplant surgery, I had a second chance at life. Four days later, I was out of the hospital and seven weeks later, back on my snowboard again. A year and a half after my liver transplant, I had a chance to represent our country again in 2002 at the Salt Lake City Winter Games where I won a bronze medal. Seeing the American flag being raised overhead and a bronze medal being placed around my neck was a highlight of my life. The next day, I got a chance to meet my donor family for the very first time to thank them in person for giving me the gift of life and to share in that victory together. My donor family are my true heroes. I'm healthier and stronger than ever before my transplant. There's nothing I can't do. I'm forever grateful and forever humbled by the decision to donate. I think this is the real miracle of organ and tissue donation. I'm not the only one that has been through the transplant process. Meet some of my friends who have a transplant story of their own to tell. Sean Elliott preceding Jason Terry there. Sean to the ball now by about 10 years. I first noticed that uh, something was wrong with me after uh, the playoffs in 1993. Uh, we'd lost a heartbreaking series to Charles Barkley and the Phoenix Suns, and I was devastated. And uh, for the next two weeks or so, I thought I was depressed because I couldn't get out of bed. I was extremely tired every day, and I had no appetite. After numerous tests, uh, biopsies, um, all kinds of urine uh, tests, blood tests, uh, they, the doctors really couldn't come up with anything conclusive at that time. At that point on, uh, I played in the NBA for the next you know, five and a half or so years with um, chronic kidney failure, but it wasn't, uh, it wasn't so much that it impeded me until my final year in 99. And at that point, the doctors told me that you know, the only option that I had on the table was dialysis or a kidney transplant. My brother, Noel, who's a year and a half older, uh, was almost a perfect match. I said, hey, uh, you know, you're almost a perfect match for me. The blood type, everything matches up. Uh, you know, do you want to give me a kidney? And he was like, absolutely. You know, he said, this is kind of what I felt I was here to do anyways. For Sean Elliott, who came back late last season after getting a kidney transplant, 12th year in the league. What a warrior. I would say that it's probably 
uh, my crowning achievement. You know, to be able to come back from that and play in the NBA and play professional sports, be the first professional athlete to come back uh, from a transplant and, and play uh, for me was huge. And um, I, I think it was a major accomplishment. And I'm, you know, I did it originally to prove to myself that I could do it, but at the same time, along the way, I meet lots of people that say they were inspired by the story and that's where uh, it really hits home to me. And that's where, uh, to me, I'm most proud. You know, I wouldn't be able to do what I do today. I wouldn't have been able to come back and play. I wouldn't be able to announce games for the Spurs now, so uh, my quality of life would be severely diminished, and uh, I owe all that to my brother. What? At first, I just thought he had like a severe cold, and then when I, I realized it was serious when he had to go down to Denver, and my parents said, he had kidney failure and I didn't understand what that was and I found out that it just meant that he needs another kidney soon. It's, it's pretty scary. I mean, you, you see what we looked up, what it was, and there is no cure. There, you know, the disease runs its course and ravages their bodies and if they survive it, they are minus some organs. I know that a transplant is where you can get a new part, a new organ, or some tissue to save your life or help you with it. Then the day came that he had a, that a kidney came and we all got ready and we went down to Denver and there were a lot of tears because it, it was a long surgery and we had to wait in the waiting room for a long time, not knowing what was going on. The doctors are just tremendous. We're really lucky. The Kidney Center at Children's Hospital is amazing. They, they do everything for those kids. You ready? Yeah. <sighs> there isn't anything he can, can't do right now. So he's, he's a lucky kid. He is a lucky kid. Mm -hmm. He's got some guardian angels somewhere. He's a special kid. He's got a heart of gold. Uh, and one thing I see about Morgan, he can make friends with anybody anywhere. We'll go to a new pool. Next thing you know, he's playing with some kids. And he's genuine. I love him. He's like a brother to me. So it was really hard to see him go through that. And the whole kidney transplant, I'm, you know, the waiting lists take so long. I was just worried. But I had faith in he pulled through and I'm really happy for that and that he's healthy and that he can still, you know, ski, golf, play baseball, stuff like that. I would say thanks a lot for the kidney. Thanks for giving me a second chance. The reason why I have a heart transplant is not because of a lifestyle that was conducive to put me in poor health and not because of any kind of family history, but because I caught a random virus that really could have attacked any other part of my body, but for some reason it just found a home in my heart. Okay. When I first got my heart transplant, it was in 1995, it was right after Christmas, and my husband gave me a beautiful gift, and that was a charm bracelet that was naked of charms. And he presented it to me as if this is a new beginning, and I want to fill it with milestones that you have with your new heart. But the way I looked at this was, it'd be kind of fun to fill it with mountains that I climb with my new heart. And there it began. Through my personal experience, I did, when I turned 16, I, I checked that box on my driver's license. And I'm glad I did, because I never in a million years would anticipate that I would be standing here talking about organ donation because I was not a candidate and I guarantee nobody thinks that they're ever going to be a candidate nobody ever expects anything like that to happen you know it's been 13 years and I've done that my my bracelet is full of charms of mountains that I've climbed with my new heart I feel like there's nothing but opportunity ahead of me and I have no fear of 
length of life, years left, what might happen, you know, all these things that, that a lot of people living with conditions have. And I just feel like the world is mine. Donors are the miracle of donation. They say yes to helping others. Most of the time, their gift benefits complete strangers. And their decision to donate comes at a very difficult time for the donor family. I'm proud to introduce my friend, donor father Bob Wade, to share the heroic story of his son, Robbie. My son, Robbie, uh, was a very adventurous young guy. And uh, he was also uh, a very compassionate young man. And uh, I, th I think that was a wonderful blend. Uh, of course, he, he made the decision um, as to whether he wanted to be an organ donor or not by checking that um, form when he was getting his driver's license. So when it came to carrying out what Robbie wanted, that was easy for us as a, as a family. Robbie's gift was perhaps as many as saving as many as six lives and that his tissues maybe improved the lives of as many as 30-some people. It's worth thinking about. What, whichever way you come down, whatever side of the equation you come down on, thinking about potentially helping somebody, getting outside of your, the world of your needs and, and looking at what other people's needs are is a good thing. I mean, what greater gift than, than giving somebody continued life? I hope you'll join me in saying yes to donation and designating your decision with your state donor registry to help the more than 100,000 individuals currently waiting across the country for an organ transplant, many of which will not survive without a life-saving transplant. In order to make this decision, it's important you know the facts about organ donation. More than 50,000 corneal transplants happen every year Restoring sight for men, women, and children. There is more than 112,000 people in the United States waiting on a life-saving organ transplant. One donor can save up to eight lives through organ donation. Every 12 minutes, another name is added to the organ transplant waiting list. Help do your part in saving lives. On average, 18 people die every day due to lack of available organs for transplant. One person can save and heal more than 100 lives through tissue donation. There's 245 people added to the transplant waiting list each month. 90% of Americans support donation, but only about 30% know the essential steps to become organ donors. What about the guy I read about on the internet that woke up in a tub of ice with his kidneys missing and being sold on the black market? This is impossible in, in the current situation. Organ transplant is such a complex, complex procedure, there is no way in the world that uh, you can uh, do it in private. It's too complex, it cannot be done. I heard that my parents have to pay for donor surgery. A person who becomes an organ donor doesn't have to pay any other added costs uh, because they are an, added, an organ donor. I heard if emergency room doctors know I'm an organ donor, they won't try as hard to save my life. People come into the uh, trauma or ER uh, bay, the people that the doctors that are taking care of them and trying to save their lives at that point have really nothing to do with organ donation. It's only when they are declared brain dead or are found to be uh, unsurvivable cases that the organ donation uh, procurement organization is even contacted. My history of medical illness means my organs and tissues can't be donated. Most people are actually healthier than they think they are, so that um, if you want to be an organ donor, you, you can be. And most people, even if uh, they party a little bit or uh, maybe they have some medical problems, most people can still donate an organ. It might be awkward for my family to see the donor family all the time. Donor information is protected and confidential. We don't release the donor family information to the recipient. Information is screened very carefully so for communication is in a positive manner post-transplant. My religion does not allow me to be a donor. If you and I in our short lives, and they are really short, have the chance to give part of our physical body away to give somebody else the gift of life, that's an amazing thing and something that all world religions would celebrate. 
If he had done or did, I am. Make a difference. Give someone a chance and be an organ donor for donor dudes. Be a donor, dude. You should be a donor, dude. Be a donor, dude. Be a donor, dude. Be a donor, dude. Be a donor, dude! <laughs> Make the decision. Be an organ donor. Join us in doing your part to help save lives. Be a donor, dude, dude. Come on, seriously. Be a donor, dude. Team Donor Dudes! Now that you know the facts about donation, here are the three ways to designate your decision and get involved. Register to be an organ and tissue donor on your state's online donor registry. Each state is different, so visit chrisklugfoundation.org and click on Donate Life to register in your state. Say yes the next time you receive or renew your driver's license at the Division of Motor Vehicles. And finally, have the conversation with your family and tell them your donation decision. Talk to your friends. Encourage them to learn the facts and make a decision. Host a Donor Dudes event at your school, club, workplace, or church. It's a great way to give back and gain community service. Join Team Donor Dudes. Get your sports team or club to join Team Donor Dudes. Make donation a priority with your team. It's a great team building cause. You can also share that you're an organ donor with your friends on Facebook. Go to your timeline and select Life Event. Then choose Health and Wellness and select Organ Donor. On this page, you can add your state and when you registered. For example, the day you registered at the DMV. You can also add a personal story. Almost everywhere you go, there's a connection to organ donation. Visit chrisklugfoundation.org to learn more about organ donation. We can help answer your questions and help support your donor dudes activities. You can make a difference. Join me and say yes to organ donation and help to eliminate the wait for the over 100,000 people currently waiting.